platform, Jimmy Maddox. Hey guys, how's it going? Whew, that was good. We're gonna get right back there. <laughs> and go. Hallelujah. I do want to speak to you for just a moment. The Lord impressed me on what it means to step into something on unity. And I wanted to take just about three to five minutes to teach to you out of the book of Matthew on going somewhere in, in unity. The Bible says in Matthew 11, starting in verse 12, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, if you skip down to 17, it says, We played the flute for you, and you, dan and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not lament. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a wine bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. Tonight, when I felt the whirlwind going through, there was not the whirlwind of God. It was a whirlwind that was taking each of us into our own place, which then separate us from the body, which made the spirit lift higher, not come closer. You played the flute and you did not dance. I played the, d I mourned and you did not dirge. A body moves together in one place. And when it's time to rejoice, the body rejoices. And when it's time to mourn, the body mourns. And when the whirlwind tries to sweep you out of what the spirit is doing, you step back into what the spirit is doing. And you rejoice when he's rejoicing and you mourn when he's mourning. Worship when he's worshiping, and you weep when he's weeping. Does that make sense? I feel that this body is on the cusp of something. From the last time I was here to now, there's so much more foundation that's been laid. There's so much more that God's done. And I feel like the cornerstone has been placed, Pastor. And I feel like those foundation walls are be becoming set. And now as the, 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 the floor panels are being laid. It has to be laid in a place of unity. It has to be laid in a place where you're going together, not separate. Is everybody okay with that? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? It's not a rebuke by any means. It's a direction. All right? So tonight, as we go together, I want to ask us to go there in one accord. Wherever the Spirit leads us, for our minds to be in, for our bodies to be in, and for us to, to violently seek what the Holy Spirit has together. Practical, absolutely. For newer believers and those who have not been in a culture where you need to be in unity, practically what that means, if, if worship's going on, then everybody's worshiping. You're not talking, you're not having conversations, you're not even really praying for anybody. You're all going there in unity. You're all entering in with thanksgiving in your hearts. You're all watching the chains fall off. And then there are times where the leadership of the church will lead you into praying for one another. They'll lead you into this. But it's all directed in one place, not 15. One place. Does that make sense? Is that practical? Is that what you meant? Awesome. Everybody good with that? Say amen. All right, now let's go to some of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. John 14, 15, 16, and 17. We're not going to do them all. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We're all mostly familiar in John 14 where it talks about being the way, the truth, and the life. But I want to skip down to verse 7 in 14. And read this to you. If you had known me, you had known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. And it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you've not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. 
So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am, the fa- I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The word that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. I believe that we are in a season where the The Spirit of God who is here with us on earth, right? Jesus is not here. God is not here. They're everywhere. But he gave us the Holy Spirit to to guide us. He's the one that's talking to us all the time. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and God is up there watching over everything. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. The purpose of Jesus is to reveal the Father. Jesus didn't come to gain worship for himself. He came to gain worship for the Father. He came to reveal the one that has always been behind him, the one who has always been there with him, the Father. And I believe what we have done, and I want you to listen to this whole phrase before you you jump off. We've stopped at Jesus, and we've put a shield of Jesus in front of the Father, and we've not went any further. And Jesus' purpose is to reveal the Father. Why? Why do we need to not stop at Jesus and look through Jesus into the Father? He's the door. Why do we not go through that door to the Father? Our hearts are wounded. Fathers have disappointed us. Or we think he's mean. We think he's the one that's going to judge in the end. He's the one that's going to say, depart from me. He's the one that's going to say, you know what? You didn't quite do good enough. And so we stop at Jesus because Jesus' blood washed us all clean. And he's the one that's going to be like, yes. But the Father, we're afraid we're not actually going to make it through when we get to him finally. But the truth is, everything that you see in Jesus, the personality that we love so much, how faithful he is, how, the, how, how he shed his blood, how he washed us clean is a, an exact image of the Father. Exactly. So there is no big bad God that's going to slam you with a hammer. He's the same as Jesus. His compassion for you is so great that he actually loves you as a son and a daughter just as much as he loves Jesus himself. When he looks at you, he actually sees the blood of Jesus flowing through your veins and he sees you as his own. He does not separate you from Jesus. It's impossible. He says, look, there's my daughter. There's Billy. Billy. He's my son. That's Jesus. You know, Jesus, Billy, they hang out. They play football. He says, Billy, you're my son, and I do not separate you in any way whatsoever from how I look at Jesus. I look at Billy the same way. Amen? Now let's turn over to John 15. I am the vine, I am the true vine, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. We have a hard time with that one right there because we immediately see the Father, God, as being the one who takes care of everything. So he's the one that's going to cut it and prune it. And so we immediately jump back and we say, "Uh uh-oh, it's the Father again. So we skip that part, usually. Every branch in me does not bear fruit. He takes away. There we go again. There's, there's God the Father taking things away. But you know what that actually means? It actually means he lifts that branch up closer to the sun so it can bear better fruit. It doesn't mean he cuts it off. He gives us the chance. He loves us through it. He brings us closer to him. He reveals himself more so we can understand more. 
He does not cut you off. It's pretty good. <laughs> every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that, it may be bear, that you may bear more fruit. So we have two categories here. We have the people who've, who've never really been connected to the vine that well. You're kind of withering. You're kind of dying. You're trying to connect. You know, you're trying to get the, the nutrients you need, but you've never really got into the vine. You've never really connected into the spirit and attached yourself in a way that you could flourish. And so you're not bearing fruit. So God lifts you up and he places you closer to the sun so he can help you bear fruit. And then you have category number two, where for years and years and years, you've been connected to that source and you've watched yourself over and over and over again be slammed back to the ground. And you feel like, God is against you. You feel like, why am I not bearing fruit anymore? Why is he not talking to me anymore? Why is he so against me? But God says, no, I am cutting the end of your branches so you can bear more fruit, so you can bear bigger fruit. He's not coming against you to take things away. He is coming to you to give you more. But all of our life, we are taught, you must have done something bad because now God is removing this from you for a season. So you must be in sin, but God is saying, no, you are not in sin. No, I am not removing these things from you. I am simply making it so you can bear more fruit. I am coming to you with a good thing, not a bad thing. I'm coming to you with love, not d discontent. I'm coming to you so you can bear more fruit. I am loving you. So you actually will grow to the highest of highs. But the enemy says, woe is me. I don't get to sing on the worship team anymore. I relapsed. Whatever. You know, there's a thousand things he tells us. And God's saying, no. Listen. Listen. Trust the vine. Trust the vine. I'm pulling you higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. I am not against you. The trial that you're in right now is not from the enemy. The trial that you are in is so you can produce more fruit. It's so you can be pulled higher to me, closer to me, so you can know me more and more and more and more so you don't give up now because the fruit is there. The branch has just got to grow back. In this past season, throughout the entire body of Christ, God has brought an extreme pruning season where you feel like you're dry. Not in every single person, but on a wide scale, feel like they're dry, feel like the Spirit is not moving the same way He used to move, and then He explodes in moments and you have hope, but overall, we've settled into a place of hope deferred where we've been praying for years, for some of us, and for some of us for weeks, depending on where our relationship is, and revival just doesn't seem to be what I thought it should be. It's not exploding all the time like it's supposed to be. I get a trickle here and I get a trickle there, but I'm just so tired of actually believing this is gonna happen. And we settle into this place of hope deferred. And then I had a dream about what I believe happens. In Matthew 16, you remember the slave girl, the fortune teller that they rebuked and they cast the spirit of divination out. And when they cast that spirit out, Paul and Silas got, that's when they got thrown in prison because she could no longer tell fortunes. The literal translation of that spirit is the spirit of Python. If you look up the spirit, it's called the spirit of Python. And it's divination, it's witchcraft different things like that that carry that spirit. So what happens is we start to accuse God saying you are not doing what you said you would do. I've waited for 40 years. I've waited for 10 years. I've waited for five minutes and you're not 
doing what you said you would do. And we take on that little piece of rebellion against God. And what does the Bible say rebellion is? Rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft, which is the spirit of Python. What does Python do? It squeezes out the light extremely slowly. And I had a dream last night. Was it last night, Ryan? Last night or the night before? Where I saw all of these people, and some of them had a python wrapped around their arms, and some of them had a python wrapped around their leg, and some around their waist, and some around their head. And every time something disappointed would happen, they would once again not connect to the vine, and it would squeeze a little tighter. And slowly, but surely, eventually all hope is gone. All life is gone. The way that you see everything in life becomes dreary. There's just no hope. But the Lord tonight, the good news is <laughs> that if one moment and that breaks off. It's one moment. In one moment, hope can be entirely restored. In one moment, the feeling that you're not going to make it, you're not good enough, that it's all going to end, can go away. Because the true Spirit of God comes and He gives you vision. He shows you the Father. He does his job. And he leads you to Jesus. And Jesus cleans you up. And then Jesus shows you the Father. Who doesn't bang you in the head. But he wraps his arms around you. And he pulls you close. And many of us do not want to be pulled close by our fathers. But when Father God pulls you into his chest. And you lean on to his chest and you hear the very heartbeat begin to thump in your ear you know everything is okay you, it gives you hope for tomorrow it gives you hope through the situation and it's nothing more than a posture of leaning in toward him that's it it's not complicated it's not fasting for 40 days. Those are good. It's not praying for 40 hours. That's good. It's not reading your Bible 100 times. That's good. It's not going to church every Sunday, but that's good. It's not giving, but that's good. It's not anything that you can do whatsoever. That's good. All it is is you saying yes and leaning in. And when he goes to cut those edges off that are actually causing that spirit of python to wrap stronger around you and suck the life out of you, instead of saying, God, why are you doing that? You say, yes, God, and you lean in further, and life begins to build inside of you, and vision begins to build inside of you, and no longer are you the hopeless one at work, but you're the one saying, you know what? It's all going to be okay. It's going to be okay, Pastor. It's going to be all right. You become the person that you want to be, the one that you always look up to, the one that you kind of make fun of. Why are they so happy all the time? You know what I mean? I've definitely done that. <laughs> I wish they were just not so happy. You become that person. You become the one that's always full of life and is always full of hope. Amen. We're going to break that spirit tonight. Jesus. If you feel like that's you, I want you to stand up. If you feel like at times there are things that are just sucking your life away, that you get hopeless, you may not be hopeless today, but you'll probably be hopeless tomorrow. Jesus. just go ahead and come forward. Mm. Jesus. If 
you guys of one line would be great, one straight line. I feel like the Lord wants to break these things off and then he wants to show us to the banqueting table and show what it really means to be in relationship with him. Take us into the house of wine. Jesus. Just close your eyes. Holy Spirit, come. It's the Spirit of God. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And today we're going to ask that that yoke be broken off of your shoulders and command it to go and that you are replaced with the yoke of the Holy Spirit. Because you got to listen. You're yoked by something. You're either yoked by something in the world or you're yoked by God. But there's always a yoke. God, we ask that you begin to rest on these individuals right now. Just focus on him. Be one corporate deliverance. <sighs> Spirit of God, increase your presence right now in Jesus' name. shoulders. Some of you feel them running up and down your spine. Feel them getting hot on hands, chests. Jesus. Now we take authority over that spirit of Python in the name of Jesus. And Father, we break its back in Jesus' name. And we command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we ask that you move through these people and you release the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. You yoke them with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. speak life and life abundantly in Jesus name no more destruction in your life life and life abundantly in Jesus name Life and life abundantly in Jesus' name. I'm going to finish and pray for these. I'm going to have Ryan come up. He's going to be, speak just for a moment on the life of prayer while I'm praying for these guys, the life of prayer and intimacy with Jesus, and give a brief history of his testimony over the last couple of years of where God has brought him from, right? Just what Jimmy was <clears throat> kind of talking about tonight. 
It's easy. It was easy once Jesus touched me to, to give myself to him and to say yes to him time and time again. Because when he touches us, he gives us freedom. When he, when he touches us, we actually feel free, and he actually does set us free. But then what happens is, is I started realizing that I had built my entire identity on what I thought, on what other people told me, who, who they said I was. Whether it be my mother, my father, whether it be my, my best friend or my pastor in my church, and those, and those, those words that they, that they spoke, they have power because either we receive them or we don't. But so what I started figuring out was is that my identity was wrapped around what people said about me, what people thought about me, good, bad, and otherwise. But what I failed to realize when I got saved and I gave my life to the Lord was, is that a bunch of wounds in there? And what I realized a couple years ago that those wounds were really heavy. They were rooted and grounded in a spirit of pride where I wouldn't allow myself to let anybody into my life because so many people had let me down. So many people had spoken things, whether they didn't come true or not, or whether I had my own thoughts or expected something to happen that didn't happen. These wounds started increasing in my heart. And so the next thing I knew, I, I was on this pilgrimage of self-preservation and selfish ambition. Even though I loved Jesus with all of my heart, I was a youth pastor, I loved him. And I love sharing the gospel with people. I love seeing people get touched by the love of God. But what I started realizing was I was missing part of God. And that was the Father. I started, I missed the relationship of Holy Spirit, of the Father's words touching my heart and allowing Him to start speaking my identity over me, starting to allow Him to get me caught up in the realm of glory, in the realm of who He says I was, in the realm of who He is, a glorious one, majestic and full of glory. He really is. He's beautiful. And he loves us. He loves me dearly. He gave his own son. He must love me pretty much. When he says, son, there was this dream before the beginning of the world. Y'all know this dream? It was the dream that the Trinity had. That dream was to create... That dream was to create a people that they could put themselves in and could pour out their love on. That was the dream that the Trinity had before the foundations of the world was to, 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 to create a masterpiece, works of art. And I'm looking at every one of them right here. I'm looking at every one of them up on the stage. The masterpieces that they dreamed up before the foundations of the world. I'm staring at right here in these pews on, these, on the floor, playing the piano and the keys. And that dream was a dream of love that was exploding out and they had to share it. They wanted to give it to somebody because it was too good to just keep for themselves. And so what they did was... They created Genesis 1. They created Adam and Eve. And you know what they did with Adam and Eve? With Adam, we'll just start with him. They made this garden. You know what that garden was for? This is what I've just realized, and this is my whole part of the testimony I want to give you guys because I feel the Lord. I just want to call you guys higher because the Father of glory is visiting you guys and he's calling you guys up into your destiny. He's calling you guys up into who you are in him, who he made you to be, who he created you to be, 
because your masterpieces, every one of you, are works of art, are complete perfections of glory from the Trinity, created, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, birth every one of you guys. Psalm 139, we can get lost in that reality of the thoughts and the, 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 mark, the, the, the workmanship of his hand and how each one of you guys he thought about individually, completely unique, completely set apart for such a time as this, for, one, for more than one purpose, but for that main purpose is to receive from the Father, from the Son, and from the Holy Spirit. It's just to receive their love. All they want to all, all they want to do is to love on us forever. <laughs> forever and ever and ever. The love of God is for us. And we will be continually getting transformed from glory to 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 glory forever. Forever, forever. This is our inheritance. This is our inheritance. It's getting caught up in the beauty of the Trinity. That John 15 abiding. That John 15, where all he says is, I just want to talk to you. I just want to love on you. I just want to speak identity over you. I just want to set you apart and, and call you into your destiny. I want to call you higher. I want to set you apart and tell you how much I think about you. All of my thoughts that are for you. And I just want to speak these things to your heart until you get them. And then I want you to speak them back to me because I love it when you talk back to me. Even if you're yelling at me, I love it when you speak to me. Even if you're yelling at me, I love when you talk to me. And so for the past couple years, I started realizing that the Father really loves me. And that the Father's really for me. And that he really loves his kids. He really loves his creation. We are a peculiar people. Hallelujah. We are a peculiar people. Hallelujah. But you know what? The Father of glory is absolutely in love with every one of us. We are sons and daughters of the King of glory the Father of lights. And right now, I just believe for you guys that he is calling you guys to, on a pilgrimage in life in God. He wants to catch you guys up in life in God. And I just feel just the pleasure of the Father over you guys. And I believe that he's setting you guys apart. He's going to take you guys somewhere. And it's going to be a sign and a wonder on the earth. And in that place, he's going to bring you guys together. He's answering two prayers in this room. And it's the two prayers that Jesus prayed in John 17. He, before, right before Jesus went to the cross, Jesus asked the Father for two things. He asked him for a couple more, but these two things. He said, Father, would you make them one? Talking about the body. He said, make them one as we are one, talking about the Trinity. He says, they've got to know how we work, how we operate. They've got to know so that they can be one just like us on the earth, so that the world can see us. And then he said, make them one individually. Make them one. Catch them up in that Trinity, in that Trinitarian reality so that I can show them my glory. Because in John 17, 24, we see the desire of Jesus' heart. And he says, Father, I desire them. This is my cry. I'm going to the cross for you, Daddy. I've showed the world who you are. And here I am. This is my request. Father, I desire them. I want them to be with me where I am. And where is he? Where is he? He's in glory, sitting at the right hand of Daddy right now. And so I just believe over this house right now that he's catching you guys up in the whirlwind of glory. 
in the whirlwind of the Trinity. He's setting you guys apart. You guys are called and destined for greatness. This house, Redemption House, is called to greatness. I felt earlier today that you guys are a light into the darkness. That the Father is calling you guys higher. He wants to show you things. Jeremiah 33, 3, he told Jeremiah, he said, call out to me and I'll show you things, great and mysterious things. The Father wants to show you things, great and mysterious things, great and mighty things. Call out to me. He says, call out. to show you things, if you want to enter into this next season that God is moving you into, run to this altar, throw up your hands and ask him, show me Jeremiah 33, 3, give that to me, you said that is mine, you said that is mine, I want that God, I want that God, I want that God, show me great and mighty things, show me the mysteries that you promised me, unlock revelation to me God. Father, if you said that we can go to the third heavens, I am asking you, show me how. Show me how in Jesus' name. If you said that we can move in signs and wonders, Father, we are asking you right now, show us how. Teach us, Father. Show us how. You are the great and mighty teacher. You are the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Show us how. Show us how, God. Show us how, Father. Shapa, rombo sakarababa, lo shababa. The violent take it by force. Father God, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, they are not afraid of you coming to them and telling them this is what your word says and you said that I can have it. They are not afraid of you talking to them. They are not afraid of you asking them for every promise that the Bible says. Go to them. What do you want tonight? Do you want a gift of healing tonight? Father, I want a gift of healing. You said, you said that we can heal the sick and raise the dead. Father, show me, show me how to raise the dead. Show me how to heal the sick. What do you want tonight? What do you want in the spirit tonight? Father. Tonight the Father is inviting you into a place of intimacy with him where you can crawl in his arms and he can teach you the things that you never dreamed you could do. He is asking you to move in a depth of the spirit, the bottom of the river, not the top. We get satisfied with floating and back floating on our backs in the river of God when God wants us to float on the bottom, the bottom of the river. He wants us to drown and die in his spirit. 
He has called us to die daily. He wants us on the bottom of the river. Yes, we're going to have fun, a lot of fun. But also, we are going to do the works that Jesus did. We are going to raise the dead. We are. It's not a question. We are going to heal the sick. We're going to heal the terminally sick. We're going to heal AIDS patients. And we're going to heal cancer patients. And when the doctor says no, God is going to say yes. And he's going to do that through you. He's not going to do that only through me. He's going to do that through your hands. He is going to do that through your hands. There will be a day in time if you learn to swim on the bottom of the river. There will be a, a day in time where you can put your hand on the corner of a hospital and command it to empty. But you have to learn to swim on the bottom of the river. You gotta stop playing and splashing around on the top and you got to get to know him on the bottom of the river. Today, Redemption House is called higher. Today, Redemption House is called to walk in a greater anointing than it walked in yesterday. It is called to expect more healings. It is called to expect more signs and wonders. It is called to expect more movement of the Spirit. It is called to expect unity in the things of God and the breaking of bondages. Where in this city can a homosexual come and be delivered in one instant? Where in this city can a drug addict come and be delivered instantly? Where in this city can people come and their bondages be broken? I say it's Redemption House. I say it's you. Father says it's you. Learn to swim on the bottom of the river. Baga Bushkara. We declare in the heavenlies an open heaven over this place. We declare and we prophesy to the spirit of the air. This is a place of open heavens. This is a place of open heavens. From this place, apostles will be released. From this place, prophets will be released. From this place, preachers will be released in the name of Jesus. From this place, evangelists will be released in the name of Jesus. Show. Pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists. Apostles, in Jesus' name. We call you forth. We call you forth. We call you forth in Jesus' name. We call in the winds from the north and from the south and from the east and to the west. And we say, blow, blow, blow in Jesus' name. We prophesy to the north and we prophesy to the south and the east and the west. Give us our children in Jesus' name. Give us our children in Jesus' name. We will not stand in a place of no children. Give us our children. We are not barren. Those children belong to us, and we call them in in Jesus' name. the spirit of prayer and the spirit of intercession on this house in Jesus name we prophesy deep deep works of prayer in each and every person we prophesy lifestyles of prayer we prophesy 24 hours prayer without ceasing in Jesus name
Tracy and Dave, will you stand up for me? Shay, Bamba Saga Bobo. Jesus. 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 The Spirit of God has planted you here. That is not to be shaken nor taken lightly. The Spirit of God has set you up as an apostolic voice to shake everything that can be shaken and to challenge the religious spirit. I prophesy an increase in anointing in Jesus' name. I say the dreams that you have dreamt are too small, says the Lord. And I prophesy to the air an opening of floodgates of finances. Your own buildings. In Jesus' name. Ah! I speak plans and schemes. Money making plans. In Jesus' name. What your hand touches, it will prosper. In Jesus' name. But what the Lord is going to do through you spiritually is a way greater than what he's going to do financially. Financially, he is going to move to sustain the grand calling that he has placed on this house spiritually. The breaking of bondages, the setting the captive free, the reaping of the harvest. Yes, Isaiah 61. I prophesy and speak over you a depth in the spirit unlike you've ever known. I break any remaining religious ties to old things and I break them off of your back in Jesus' name. And I say no longer will they influence your thought patterns. No longer will you have to fight them. But we speak true life, life and life abundantly inside of you in Jesus' name. Po shagaba, whoa shamba. a new way. It's going to happen 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 a new way. Oh, it's going to happen a new way. It's going to happen a new way. You can't plan it. It's going to happen a new way. Prophesy the release of angels in Jesus' name. The release of angels to guide and direct you, to protect you, and to lead you, and to minister to you. Ministering angels in, ah, in Jesus' name. We say this place will be known as the Pool of Bethesda. Rainbows, 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 rainbows everywhere. God's promises are true for you. God's promises are true for you. Stand on the promises. Stand on the promises of 10 years ago, says the Lord. Stand on the promises of 20 years ago, says the Lord. Stand on the promises of all time. He shall fulfill the things that he said he will do. He is not a God that he should lie. Robosa, Robosa, 
Lombo cola ba ba shamba ba shamba rombo combo 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 The Lord of heaven says I have and I will will send you those to hold your arms. I will send you the laborers. He will send those to stand at your right hand and your left hand and at your rear guard, says the Lord. For the enemy shall not be happy. He shall not be happy with the plundering of hell. But the Lord will send the protection. Never worry. Never worry and never operate in fear. For the Lord will send the protection. He has set it up and he has released it already. Plunder hell. Plunder hell. The Bible says that they shall exceedingly shake up their cities. Shake up your city in Jesus' name. 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 Jesus name. Shake it up. Go after the bars. Go after the liquor stores. Go after the prostitution. Go after everything that raises itself against the knowledge of God. Go after it in the name of Jesus. Go after it. Go after it. Drive it out of the city in Jesus' name. I charge you the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and shake this city. leadership of this church, please make a quick line. If you're on the leadership, unless you're on the floor already, just make a line all the way across, one straight line, quickly, 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 anything in leadership, anything in leadership, anything, whoa, anything in leadership, ka-ba-ba, sha-ba-ba, sha-ba-ba-ba-ba. Father, we release a fresh zeal in Jesus' name. And we release a fresh grace in Jesus' name to run faster and to run harder and to run with more of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Fill them to overflow. Fill them to overflow. Fill her to overflow in Jesus' name. Shamba. Shapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapap
If we miss praying for anybody for the leadership, go ahead and come back up. Make your way to the front if we missed anybody. I don't want you to feel left out. If you're a part of the leadership, and we miss praying for you. Come on. Oh, Father, release your power. And now anyone else who has not been prayed for and you would just like to be, come on up. Just get back in that same line. Just one line, it just makes it easier. If you've not been prayed for and you'd like to, just get in the one line. It's right here. Start it right here.
Increase your presence. 